Hi, I'm Don Damari, and you're listening to A Teaspoon of Healing. Today, I have Dr. Alan Leica with me. Hi, doctor. Hi, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? Very good. Thank you. Thanks for joining me on the podcast. Thank you for having me. So, Dr. Leica, your story is very powerful. You're, you still are, and you were a top cosmetic physician. And you went through a life-changing experience. So could you describe your journey to our listeners? Sure. Let me go through it for you, and I'll tell you the story. I, I was at the top of my career in 2003. I was walking with my wife in Disneyland, and my wife turned to me and said, What's wrong with you, hun? You know, Dawn, for once in my life, I was taken aback. I hadn't said anything wrong. I hadn't done anything wrong. I hadn't even thunk anything wrong. But she persisted, what's wrong with you, hun? I said, what do you mean? I don't think there's anything wrong with me. She said, listen to your foot. I said, what do you mean, listen to my foot? That's a funny thing. And she said, well, listen to it. And my right foot had suddenly and mysteriously developed a right foot drop. You know, your brain is designed on so that when you're walking, your foot lifts up. But my foot was no longer lifting up. It was slapping on the pavement with each step that I was taking. And with that, my foot just wasn't working properly. My wife said, did you have a stroke? I said, dear, you're a doctor, I'm a doctor. Um, if I had a stroke, I'd be lying on the pavement now saying something incomprehensible. And she said, well, when you get back, you better get this checked out. Well, Don, when your spouse says that, what do you do? Well, you definitely do what they say. <laughs> yes, you should do what you say if you know what's good for you. Yes. <laughs> Certainly, that's what I did. I saw hundreds of doctors, and they did every test known to man. They did CAT scans. They did brain scans. They did MRIs. They did scan scans. And you know what they found at the end of the day, Don? What did they find? They found absolutely nothing. And when the doctor wow. finds absolutely nothing, they do more tests and more tests. I think they invented some tests just to try and figure some things out. And, you know, there was nothing to be found. So at the end of this, the consensus was they were going to send me to a neurologist. A neurologist is the brain doctor, the guy who knows all mm -hmm. the pieces. And so I went to see this neurologist. He was a world-class expert. I walked in and I said, hi. He said, hi. You better be sitting down when I tell you this. I said, why? I've got a dropped right foot. He said, no, you don't. You have ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. You better get your affairs in order because in six months, you're going to be dead. Oh, wow. my goodness. That hit me like a ton of bricks, Don. That was yeah. really out of the blue. I said, is there a way to prove this diagnosis? He said, of course, on autopsy. <gasps> wow. He, this guy had no bedside manner. He must have been the brother of Dr. House on the TV show or something like that. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, um, I, I shot back at him. I'm not going to die to prove you wrong. But, Don, when you go through something like this, you go through what they call a grief reaction. And Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross wrote about the grief reaction in a book called On Death and Dying. I was supposedly dying, and I went through all the stages that she mentioned, but I don't think they were stages. They were more flitting incidents. I went through anger. When you go through a grief reaction, you're often angry, and anger mm -hmm. is the number one thing. You're mad at the world. You're mad at everything, and that anger really pervades everything. You go mm -hmm. through bargaining. Oh, God, please don't let this happen. I, I'll do anything if you don't let this happen. But I thought God wasn't listening, and he didn't seem to be doing anything. You go through denial. Denial is not the river in Egypt. It really is a state where you say, I don't believe I have this thing. And, but, you know, I had a dropped right foot, so I couldn't deny it. And then you go through depression. Depression is the worst. That's when everything is black. The world mm -hmm. is black. You can't eat. You can't sleep. The world just doesn't seem right. And you just can't do anything. Dawn, have you ever been depressed? I have. 
but I feel like the, my reasons were not as valid. You know what I mean? It's, I, I, I guess valid's the wrong words, word, but you know, when you hear about somebody having a diagnosis like that versus other life stuff, it's just pales in comparison. No, but depression all acts the same way. And we got what causes it. And it's not a very pleasant state and that's not a very no. pleasant thing to do. Um, no. You know, I, at that phase, I didn't know what to do. I asked my wife, what should I do? And she said, you know, I don't know what you have, she said, but you're smart. You can figure it out. Well, I'd seen hundreds of doctors and they couldn't figure it out. How could I do that? But back in 2003, Don, something new was invented. You might have heard about it. It's called the internet. Do you ever hear about that? <laughs> hmm, not sure. <laughs> I say that with a great deal of humor because you know in this day and age the internet is everything we have mm -hmm. made the internet one of the most powerful things in the world and every day we're on it it's because mm -hmm. of the internet that you we can communicate as we are where are you mm -hmm. located i am located about an hour south of los angeles california yeah, here i am in edmonton alberta canada i'm at my nice. lake cottage and yet we can communicate very nicely by the internet which is a yes. beautiful thing Without the internet, we couldn't do anything. But back in That's 2003, true. the internet was very primitive. You had to get on by dialogue oh, connections. You know, that's when your phone got put on a cradle and communicated with another phone. And it went, Ria, Ria, Oh, I remember. Ria. I remember. a sound for about 15 minutes. Uh -huh. When it finally connected, you got connected with a site that literally didn't have a lot of power. You know, our computers mm -hmm. back then didn't have a lot of power and a lot of memory. No. So we had no, they didn't. to use languages like DOS and things like uh -huh. that to communicate. And yep. it was a very primitive thing. But I was lucky. I had a lot of friends that were nerds. And they had me to get <laughs> on was the one internet too. and get to the way mm -hmm. that I was going to be. So mm -hmm. at this phase, uh, I got on and I was able to find about a doctor by the name of David Martz. David was a doctor in Colorado Springs, uh, Connecticut, uh, Colorado Springs, Colorado. And he um, had a story that was similar to mine, but very different. He got worse much more rapidly, and he was on his deathbed. Now, he was a well-known doctor, so doctors from around the world were coming up to say goodbye to him. And a doctor came up from Texas, a doctor by the name of Dr. Harvey. And he looked at David and he said, David, there's something wrong with this picture. I don't think you have ELS. I don't think you have the Gehrig's disease. I think you have something totally different. David whispered because that's all he could do at that time. What do I have? The doctor said, I think you have chronic Lyme's disease. I think mm. you're an outdoorsy person and you were bitten by a tick. And that tick mm. has caused a disease that mimics ALS. It mimics Lou Gehrig's disease. And he said, if I'm right, I can start you on medications and I can make you rapidly better. Well, the doctors, uh, Dr. Martz said, well, certainly I'm dying. I've got nothing to lose. And he started him on, on uh, medications. And within two weeks, David was like Lazarus arising from the dead. He was doing everything the way that he was. And it was remarkable. So I knew I had to get in touch with David. I knew I had to get in touch. And I knew I had to find out the things uh, that he can teach me. So I phoned every hospital in Colorado Springs, Colorado. You know, any doctor can get in touch with another doctor if he's persistent. So by finding out which hospital he practiced at, I was able to get in touch with him. And David and I talked for hours. And at the end of it, he said, you know, Dr. Leica, I'd like to see you. Can you come down and see me? Well, this was our Thanksgiving weekend in 2003. And he literally said, um, you know, I need to see you. And I said, well, David, I can't. My wife's invited 50 people over. She, he said, well, aren't there any planes in Canada? <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't going to let me off that easily. So I went to my wife and I apologized. I said, dear, I'm not going to be here for Thanksgiving. She said, where are you going? You always seem to be away. I said, yeah, I, I do go away teaching a lot and learning a lot. But she said, this time I'm not going for anything like that. I, there's a doctor in Colorado Springs that claims he can help me. She said, hallelujah, I'll pack your bags for you. 
I'll even drive you to the airport. Let's get you there. Let's see if he can help you. And I said, wow, good. Um, so I got on a plane from Edmonton to Denver. It was a delightful flight. Then I got on a little rinky-dink bubble jumper from from Denver to Colorado Springs. You ever been on a really, really rinky-dink puddle jumper, jumper flight, Don? I have. And uh, I don't enjoy those. Yeah, well, yeah, this one was yeah. ultimately the worst flight I'd ever been on because at the end of the day, the air comes off the desert and it causes turbulence. And turbulence mm -hmm. causes all sorts of problems. The plane mm -hmm. would climb 100 feet and then it would suddenly drop 200 feet. It would climb another 200 feet and it would drop another 100 feet. And it would do this over and over and over again. Now, this was only a 15-minute flight, but it was a flight from hell. And it really was not very pleasant. So at the end of it, I crawled off the plane. I was green. And there was David on the tarmac to meet me. It was wonderful. You know, it was 2003. And not all the safety precautions had been brought in because of 9-11 yet especially in small airports. David was a well-known doctor. He was seeing a guest that was a well-known doctor. So it was easy for him to do. So basically, um, I, I, was, I saw David. He said, you don't look so good. I said, you know, David, I don't feel so good. He said, I think this is a metaphor for everything that you've gone through in your life. And I said, you're right. And we talked and we talked for hours. And at the end of that talk, um, David said something miraculous. He said, I think history is repeating itself. He says, I think I can start you on medications and make you better too. And that's why I'm alive and thriving in 2021, you know, 18 years after the fact that I was supposed to be dead. You know, all of a sudden life had meaning. All of a sudden life had a wonderful power. All of a sudden life had a, was a, a wonderful place. And I knew god's plan for me i knew that i had to give back more so i started to give more to charity and one of the charities i supported was called the women of distinction which is a charity uh put on uh by the ywca in the edmonton area and it's meant to honor women uh women that from the society because women don't get the kudos that they generally need well mm -hmm. it was a wonderful thing and at that event a young lady by the name of harriet tinka came up and Harriet had applied for the Turning Points Award. You see, Harriet's story was similar to mine, but very different. Uh, Harriet was a world-class model walking the runways of New York. And, and uh, she grew tired of being in that enterprise, and she wanted to take up her second passion, which was accounting. So she went to the University of Calgary in Calgary, Alberta, and started to study there. Well, there she was befriended by a very evil person a person that was very possessive, a person that was very mean. Mm -hmm. And he ended up kidnapping her, stabbing her, mm. and leaving her for dead. Oh, now, my God. Maria miraculously got to the hospital some way. She still doesn't know how she did it. But when she got to the hospital, she met a young girl by the name of Amber. And Amber was a young girl that had a tragic story. She was in a car accident. She had lost the use of, of her legs. And both of her parents died. But she was happy as a lark. She used her story to inspire others. And she told Harriet she must do the same. So Harriet applied for this award in order to share her story with other people. And she came to me after the event and said, Dr. Leica, can I buy you lunch? And I said, of course, Harriet. She, at the lunch, she said, you know, we must write a book. And that's where we wrote our book, The Secrets to Living a Fantastic Life. Uh, and, you know, we wrote a beautiful, wonderful book that became a bestseller in the pandemic of 2020. So I, I'm very pleased that we did. I love the story. It's, this is so inspiring and amazing. And wow, that's about, like all I can say. And so your book, what what is it called? The Secrets to Living a Fantastic Life. And actually, I'd like to give everybody a copy of it. They can get a digital copy by going to the following site, secretsbook.now forward slash site, and there they can get a free digital copy, secretsbook.now forward slash 
this forward slash dot site, S-I-T-E, and everybody can get a free book. And I'd love everybody to do that. In our book, we have 13 golden pearls. Now, Don, do you know what causes a pearl in nature? A little grain of sand gets inside okay. of the wall of an oyster, and the right. oyster walls it off with a special material called luster, and that's why it makes a golden. It makes a pearl. Now, golden okay. pearls actually exist. They exist in the South Pacific, but they're extremely rare. A single mm-hmm. solitary pearl can cost upwards of ten thousand dollars. Wow. What Harriet and I found was golden pearls that are in each and every one of us. Each and every one of us has golden pearls inside them. And those golden pearls are miraculous things that really make your world a better place. Do you mind sharing Yes, uh, one of I the golden pearls? Uh, maybe two of them. Yes, sure. Start with the let's, your favorite. Let's start with love. Love is one of the most amazing yeah. pearls because it's one of the things that we give. And the more we give, the more we get. And I'm going to share with you a little story. There was a little girl that had red, beautiful, curly hair. She was so beautiful and so full of energy that she, when every, everybody saw her, they were smiling and happy. Well, that little girl one day decided to give her dad a special present. So she wrapped a shoebox with gold paper. Now, her father became enraged when he shook the box and found that there was nothing in it. And really, uh, money was tight. He didn't have a lot of money. So he um, yelled at his daughter and really became angry. Well, the daughter persisted and said, Dad, you need to open this box anyhow. The dad opened the box and he even became more enraged when he found there really was nothing in it. He said, don't you know that when you wrap a present, there should be something in it? The little girl said, Dad, you're so silly. I blew kisses in the box, and those kisses Mm -hmm. are all for you. The little girl then said, uh, the the dad then said, you know, I'm so ashamed. I'm so ashamed. I really know you gave me one of the specialist presents. Well, a short time later, the dad was heartbroken because the little girl died in a tragic car accident. So he kept the shoebox under his bed. Every now and again, he'd bring it out and he'd feel the girl's special kisses. He'd feel the girl on his lap giggling while he opened the shoebox. Well, eventually, the dad died of a broken heart. He went up to Saint. P- he went up to P- heaven, and there was Peter at the golden gates. And there was Peter saying to to the fellow, he said, "I'll let you in if you give me a special present." Well, the dad gave him this empty shoebox, and Peter said, Well, enter, my friend. You have given me the best gift of all. It's the gift of love, and it's overwhelming. Inside, he was reunited with this little girl, and that little girl was uh, bouncing and saying, Hi, Dad. Good to see you. Dad said, I missed you. The little girl said, Why? I never left you. When I died, God made me into an angel. And when you opened the shoebox, I gave you little kisses. I was on your lap, giggling and telling you stories. Well, the dad was just overwhelmed. And he said, this is the most beautiful thing of all, the gift of love. See, each one of our our chapters, each one of our golden pearls has a little story in it, Dawn. And that's one of the stories that opens and makes people welcome. And I just love that story. That's why I love to share it with you. I love that story too. That's beautiful. And you're right. It's it's a it's a priceless gift. I love that story about the dad and his daughter, even it was very tragic at the end, but it's very beautiful. Now, do you have one more pearl you can share with sure, our listeners? We don't want to give them all away. I, the last one of my favorites is the story of enthusiasm and it's it's really um Uh, once there was a carpenter by the name of Fred and Fred was tired. He had worked for the same company for 40 years and he decided to retire. So he went to his boss and he said, boss, I'm quitting. I just can't do this anymore. The boss said, well, geez, I don't know what to do. He said, can you just do one more thing for me before you leave? 
And Fred said, of course, I'll do anything for you. I've loved this job. It's the only job I've ever had. Well, then uh, the boss said, can you build me one more house? He said, you're my master carpenter. Only you have the skills to do that. Well, Fred said, of course. And he was a little begrudging at it because he really didn't have the heart to do it. So he did the job, but he dragged his ass to work. In the old days, he used to do everything to the nines. He used to do super, superior workmanship. He used to do everything beautiful. Um, but this job, he did with very shoddy workmanship, and he barely got the job done. But at the end of the job, a miracle happened, and um, the house passed inspection. So he went back to his boss, and he said, boss, I'm done. Uh, here's the keys to the house. I'm gone. He said, don't be so fast, Fred. We're going to have a little party. So they popped the champagne. They had the caviar. Uh, the boss was overjoyed, and he, everybody was thrilled that Fred was moving on to something he really wanted to do. The boss said, let's have a little speech. He said, this is Fred's last day, and I'm heartbroken that Fred is leaving us. It'll be very hard to find somebody who can replace him, he said. But, you know, Fred, I've got a little special present for you on your last day. Here's the keys to the last house you ever built. Enjoy it with all the enthusiasm that you've ever given me. Now, the reason I tell you that story, Don, is enthusiasm is not a Monday thing. It's not a Friday thing. It's something you got to carry to the game every day to make the world mm -hmm. a beautiful place. And if you do, that enthusiasm is the game changer that'll make the world a better place. I love that. Beautiful. And thank you for sharing it. Well, every, now, one, of our story, every one of our chapters has a little story about that. Get me a copy of the book because that's how you will find a, another world and you know, we've all gone through a very difficult time right now. We've on, yeah. gone through COVID, yeah. which has hurt a lot of people and caused a lot of dissent and problems in the world. But, you know, this is one of the seeds, one of the pearls that people can use to grow from that and, and move forward. And that you can get at secretsbook.now forward slash site. And we'd love to share it with you. I love that. Now, how, what advice do you have for people who are coming out of well, either coming out of COVID? I don't. Who, nobody knows how long this will last, so I don't really like to use that word. People, a lot of people have lost their enthusiasm for life, lost their enthusiasm for trying new things. How, how can people get that back? You know, it's easy. It's it's baby steps, and one of the thing I I think people have to realize is they need to be grateful for all the things they have. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I always encourage people to do is write a gratitude journal. Write down th three things that you're grateful for every day. Well, today I was going to be on your show, your teaspoon of healing, and <laughs> I said, "Geez, this is something that I'm really grateful for." because I get to share my story with more people. Mm -hmm. And if I can change just one of them by my little inspiration that I'm doing, the world's going to be better. You know, take the stories of others and be grateful that you didn't have ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease or chronic Lyme's disease that I had. Yep. Be grateful that somebody didn't kidnap you, stab you, and leave yep. you for death. Be grateful mm -hmm. that you have all the things that you do. You know, the poorest mm -hmm. person in North America has more than the, the than some of the richest people in Malaysia. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's amazing what we have in this life and the things that we are given. And mm -hmm. we just have to do that. And I challenge everybody to do something today for their neighbor that they wouldn't regularly do. You know, if you like to bake, well, bake some cookies and give a dozen cookies to your neighbor. Or even just talk to them over their fence because very few people even know their neighbors in this day and age. You know, True. if you go through a drive through and get a coffee, buy a coffee for the next person in line because mm -hmm. they, that will make their day. Those little things that you give, the little things you do, it will make the world a better place and the world will be better as a result of it. Pay it forward. Uh, you know, there's so much we can do. Mm-hmm. I love that. You're right. You're absolutely right. And thank you so much. Now, if, if people want to know more about you, 
Um, you know, you gave the link to your book, but what is your website for if you want to hire you? It's Dr. D-R-A-L-L-E-N, Lyka, L-Y-C-K-A dot com. And there you'll Mm -hmm. find a lot about me. If you'd like me as a professional speaker for any of your events, Mm -hmm. please get in touch with me. I mean, with the world of the internet, I could be in your, at your small group tomorrow and can Mm -hmm. help you with the things that are going on there. As I say, it's a beautiful world, and I love to share my story with as many people as possible. Uh, Doctor, that's D R A L L E N, Lyka, L Y C K A dot com. And you can find out a lot of things about me. And there's also a link for the book there, too. Hey. Well, thank you very much for joining me on A Teaspoon of Healing. Do you have any last words of encouragement for? It's my listeners people to realize it's not what happens to you it's what you do with what happens and i think yeah. that's a very important message doing little things baby step when something happens to you is the most important thing to pull you out of your despair and it's out of the hearts the depths of despair that we really understand the beautiful things and when we get to those heights that we're at so remember challenges are something we are blessings that we have There's something we have to overcome to really appreciate the great times that we have. Thank you so much for that. You're absolutely right. And thank you for being such a wonderful guest and sharing your incredible story. I appreciate it. I want you to have a fantastic day. You too. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Susan, you remember the time we were in Orange County? We were driving around and we got lost. And we ran into this place called Avila's El Ranchito. You remember the place? The place had awesome decor and authentic margaritas. Did you know that Avila's El Ranchito has been around since 1966? They have 13 locations throughout Orange County. Visit Salvador Avila's location in Lake Forest and Foothill Ranch for great food, ambiance, and specialty margaritas. This podcast is for informational purposes only and does not constitute medical advice. Please consult a physician or other health professional before undertaking changes in lifestyle or wellness habits. The author claims no responsibility to any person or entity for any liability, loss, or damage caused or alleged to be caused directly or indirectly as a result of use, application, or interpretation of the information presented herein.